I'm Andrew Clunis, and I'm the publisher of Jamaica Times newspaper and the host of Insight on Jam TV. We're speaking today with opposition leader and leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, former Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Honourable Andrew Holness. Welcome to the UK and uh, welcome to Jam TV. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks to your listeners as well for watching this program. You are here in the UK as a guest of Prime Minister David Cameron and you attended the party conference of the Conservatives in Birmingham. How was that for you? What was the experience like? It was an excellent conference, excellent experience, chance to see how our sister party, which is the Conservative Party here, does their business. Um, I've learned a lot, many things that I can take back home and use at our conference, which is in November. But I found, of course, that the policy positions here were quite similar to the policy positions that we have taken. Certainly the strong position on growth and rebuilding the economy, certainly in terms of um, ensuring that education is front and center, that there is training and apprenticeship. Those are all very good policies which we will be pursuing as well in Jamaica. So when you get back home, uh, and that's next month, it will be your party conference. Last year you faced a challenge at conference uh, which you, upon which you prevailed. This year you are facing no such uh, adversity. Are you comfortable and what are your expectations from this year's conference? You know, challenges are part of the political landscape. Um, it's necessary, indeed important, in settling the party. The party is settling down and we are preparing, getting ourselves on an election footing, um, unity. Uh, strength and a robust political organization is what we should expect to see at the conference in November this year. You are a former Prime Minister and you know the challenges that attend that office. Should you be elected at the next general elections, what would be your short, medium and long-term vision for Jamaica? Simple. Growth in the short term, growth in the medium term, growth in the long term. For too many years, Jamaica has just stagnated. We have not moved, we have not demonstrated that we are capable of taking advantage of the tremendous possibilities and opportunities that exist in our country. And I think it is now time for the post-independence generation to take charge of the country, take charge of the opportunities to expand our influence on the world scene. You know, it's, it's important that when a Jamaican goes to other countries and see how these countries are growing, and, and there is prosperity and there is opportunity that they can feel about their own country, that their own country is growing and that there is prosperity there. We have too much to be a poor country. Um, it requires leadership. It requires a, a prospecting agenda. It requires us to be progressive in our thinking. And my agenda, my platform is to grow Jamaica. It's very important that you mention the post-independence generation. You are the youngest prime minister Jamaica has had, and I suppose, the youngest political leader in the region. Um, how is the political process uh, seeking to engage with the young, dynamic, bright people who are leaving the multitude of universities that we now have? How are they benefiting the country by being brought into the political fray? Well, you know, the political party that I represent and my own political strategy embraces youth. Um, and we have made our party open to youth. Uh, and indeed, we are the party of, of young people. Generation 2000, our youth arm, is the most successful youth arm in, I would say, the entire Caribbean region. Um, so we are engaging youth. We are bringing them in the party. They are necessary for renewal. They are necessary for energizing the political process. And I'm, I'm very happy with what we have managed to accomplish politically with youth, but it is important that we give youth a mission, and that mission must be grow your country. We want you to stay in your country. We want you to help to build the opportunities and take advantage of our tremendous resources that we have. I think we need to get this generation onto the mission of building and growing Jamaica. Jamaica faces, and has faced for some time, economic challenges, social challenges challenges with infrastructure. Given the ravages of the financial crisis and other events, 
do you think Jamaica can still achieve the Millennium Goal? And is Vision 2030 now just a pipe dream or should the forecast be recalibrated? We never give up the hope, dreams and aspirations of Jamaicans that Jamaica will be a developed country. The timelines may shift a little, but I believe that we can make up good ground with good government, strong leadership, um, creativity and innovation. Yes, we will miss some of the critical millennium goals. One of them that I am disappointed in, which we had set locally, was universal literacy by 2015. The current Minister of Education sadly has admitted that he will not make the goal. I had placed the nation on good footing to do that. Again, it's a matter of leadership and ability to implement. But it doesn't mean that we give up. We try harder. Um, we look for the alternative better government, which is the Jamaica Labour Party, that will place our country on the footing to a pathway of being a developed country. You have been widely credited for your work in education in your time as Minister of Education. Um, and should you become Prime Minister again, what would be your priorities in terms of the overall governance of the country and the achievements of the country? And what would be the single most important achievement for which you would want to be remembered? Well, I've already said we have to place the economy on the pathway to growth. Growth is absolutely important, but let me reduce that a little bit. We have to build a robust economy. I would want to be remembered as the Prime Minister that placed Jamaica firmly, irreversibly, on the pathway to be a developed country. Um, I would want to be the Prime Minister to be remembered for having established in Jamaica universal secondary education. I would want to be remembered as the Prime Minister who saw to the modernization um, expansion and diversification of our economy. I would want to be remembered as the Prime Minister that brings full employment to the Jamaican economy. And most of all, I would want to be remembered as the Prime Minister that end um, abject and absolute poverty in Jamaica. Indeed, that is my passion. I want to end poverty in Jamaica. I believe it can be done. Some people say, oh, it's a pipe dream. You'll always have poverty. Yes. But I want to move more people out of the, 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 the pangs of poverty and into the middle class. I'm not ashamed to say I come from a working class background, but poverty can't be an excuse. It can't be something that we hold on to. It must be our mission to uplift our people out of poverty. Um, and that has been the drive and ambition of Jamaica. We want to step up in a life. But as you speak about poverty, the country has been going through a severe period of austerity Austerity, austerity measures have been in place for some time now. There's been a lot of belt tightening, uh, and this is largely due to an IMF agreement under which we are being, we are operating. It's not due to an IMF agreement. It's due to 18 years of mismanagement by the People's National Party. Um, let's face it. You know, the, the, the IMF has owed us nothing, and it is time that we say that. Uh, it's time that we stop using the IMF as an excuse. We must as a country take charge of our future. Um, and it is only poetic justice that it is the People's National Party that must now carry through a program of austerity. For 18 years, uh, and I don't have to defend this point that I'm making, they have made the point. Their former Minister of Finance in a meeting said to his supporters, we have to run with it. We have to loosen fiscal controls. We have to borrow in a way uh, that does not reflect frugality. Um, and now we pay for it. Uh, now the PNP government has to come back to ask the people, well, there must be belt tightening and there must be cutting. If you borrow today, you will have to tax and not spend tomorrow. And this is what is happening in Jamaica. The government is relying solely on fiscal policies. Simply meaning, they are cutting expenditure on critical things. For example, they are cutting expenditure on public health. There is a public health issue in Jamaica um, for which the government has not made an allocation to deal with it. They are cutting their public expenditure on education. There is a cut in public expenditure. In fact, there is no budget 
for infrastructure development that is government driven. And every year since this government has taken over, they have increased taxes. Now, a famous British man once said that any government who expects to grow an economy by taxing or pursuing fiscal policies is like a man standing in a bucket expecting to pull himself up by the handles. That was actually said by the great Winston Churchill. And that is what the Jamaican government is doing. They are pursuing wholly and solely a policy of fiscal austerity. It may be necessary, but it is not sufficient. Uh, the government simply has not understood that in managing an economy, yes, you must have uh, a solid fiscal structure, but you must also focus on making markets. You must focus on the efficiency of the economy. You must focus on innovation, and then you will grow. And once you grow, you will get more taxes, you will get more revenue, and you can spend more.